Student hacks Gujarat college portal to get exams cancelled. Arrested. The accused said that he did not do it for personal gain, but to rather get the online examination of GTU cancelled. Another beautiful life of a potentially great student wasted. And you know what's the biggest reason why this happened? I'll tell you just in a minute. This video is divided into four parts. Impact of movies, what is penetration testing or so-called hacking, what is the actual procedure of these pen testing and the consequences. The moment I said that this video is divided into four parts, you probably might want to jump onto the section which is looking more interesting for you. And this is exactly the reason why this happens. This eagerness of picking up the knowledge which seems like good for us is actually the reason why this all is happening. Now, I'm not saying this just because, hey, watch my entire video. I don't need to say that. I have enough of coding walkthrough videos where I get more than high or little higher than industry standard of the watch time. I get that already. The problem is nitpicking of the knowledge which you think is good for you. So let's go ahead and discuss about this incident, which is not really great. And I'm feeling a little bit sad on this one. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and uh, welcome to another video. And as you already know, this video is all about and you also know that what segment we are in. Let's go ahead and talk about the first segment which is impact of movies. In the world of entire programming, computer, hacking, penetration testing, the impact of movies and so-called dreams is really, really high, especially in the segment of hacking or so-called pen testing. In these, movies usually show that you write something really, really fast, fast is really important, on a terminal and you just hack into NASA, FBI and God knows what. But the reality is far more different from this one. And we all know this, we are aware of this fact, but still we get into the trap of nobody can touch me. I'm pretty sure that majority of you have seen the movie Social Network. There is a great and inspiring scene in that movie where Mark Zuckerberg or the actor who is playing Mark Zuckerberg get into the principal's office and says that, hey, you should be rewarding me because I found some of the potential vulnerabilities in your system, so you should reward me. And that's a very inspiring scene, a very moving scene. But what you don't see is what happens after that. Even saying that, which is really inspiring, he still is thrown out from a semester. He's thrown out from the school. And to still date also, just go ahead and try to take down the ad engine of the Facebook for just five minutes. They will come after you just like hungry hounds and they will take you down. So although whatever is shown in the movies is far from reality, but still it is somehow inspiring and affects a lot of people, which is far from the reality. That's not how things work. Movies are different. Real life is far more painful and different. You need to understand one thing very clearly. What is penetration testing or also known as pen testing? This is the formal and the legal name for so-called hacking. We explicitly call it as penetration testing because the word testing is very important. The phrase testing here simply means that you are testing something for a potential vulnerability. This nowhere includes you are damaging something or trying to damage an existing product there. Even no matter how smart you are or how sloppy you are, if anyhow you start or you somehow damage the actual working product or you leak any information which was not supposed to be leaking or you somehow damage the database, you will be the one who will be facing the consequences. So penetration testing is like the double-edged sword which any time can hurt you. The whole idea behind the penetration testing is somehow to test the system so that all the potential vulnerabilities and loopholes can be found out and fixed. And this keyword and fixed is usually being dropped out in majority of the teaching classes and whoever is teaching you or somehow you have learned that. The most important idea is you find these vulnerabilities and you report to the system which was meant to get that report. It's not like you can just walk into any website or any system and you can do these testing. You will be facing hard consequences which we'll talk about in the end section. To yourself, 
you might sound absolutely ethical that I was just testing out this payment integration on Amazon or Flipkart. But on their eyes, you were just trying to buy a product just by being a hacker, a malicious one. The real world is absolutely brutal and your intention doesn't really matter. The world doesn't care about intention. All they care about is, were you trying to hurt their actual running business? If yes, they will come after you. And they will come after you so hard that it's gonna be so much of the bad consequences you have never seen that in your worst dreams. Now, by no means, I want to scare you off with the penetration testing. No, it's a great field. It's a thriving community, thriving field, and it has so much of the money inside it as well. But with so much of money and so much of danger, so being closed, it might sometime explode and you might get hurt in that explosion. And you might be wondering why this confusion is there that I can just walk into any website and do the testing. It's because some of these websites can actually afford and do these public testings. You can just walk into those websites, especially at the scale of Google and Facebook, can report a potential vulnerability. And sometimes you read them in news that these websites are rewarding you for thousands and thousands of dollars. This is what you see in the news. What you don't see, what happens behind the scene in the other cases. In the other cases where sometimes people, when they find these vulnerability, post them on social media, try to defame them or try to use them for any other reason. In those cases, lawsuits are fined. And they, these lawsuits are not just small ones. Usually they are settled behind the social media, behind the scenes. That's why you don't see them, but they do happen. You don't need to be a Sherlock Holmes to find out that if somebody is trying to damage your business, what that company is going to do it. No matter how your intentions were, since you were not enrolled in a proper program to test their websites, you are going to face consequences. And this brings us to the point that what is actually the proper procedure of reporting these vulnerabilities and to get involved in this all process? The process of getting involved in penetration testing is not a really rocket science. There are just two easy ways of getting that. Surely there are many, but these are the two best ways. And thank goodness the second way is now involved and is here. Thanks to the startup culture that these websites are there. Anyways, let's talk about that. The first process is when you actually crack down an entire project or somehow you have a link inside the company so that you can get a project of doing the penetration testing. Once approved and the deal is cracked, you simply sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, in which you get the rules, which things you can touch, which things are off limit, which domains you can test, which domains are totally off the limit. You break the law, you face the consequences. You found a potential vulnerability, you report that in a proper reporting format, and you get paid for that. Not for individual vulnerabilities, but the entire system that you have tested out. So that's the easy way. Not so much easy because getting into the company, finding the links and getting into these kinds of deal is really a business and it's a thriving business. So it's not that much easy. The second one, which is almost like freelancing. Thanks to the startup culture, now we have so many of these third-party websites, which actually gathers the companies who want to perform the pen testing on them and the security researcher, which actually performs them. And there's no shortage of these websites. This is like aggregation of the market, which is bringing together. In these websites, you just enroll yourself and these company also enroll themselves. And on them, you just get into different zones or different categories of the testers. If you are just a beginner, you'll be testing some of the websites which just reward you for t-shirt or a certificate or a hall of fame. Now, as you start reporting more of these vulnerabilities, people find out that, hey, this is a potentially good researcher and he knows a lot about the security. And then eventually after you are invited for these private bug bounty programs as well. Now, once proven that you are really a valuable asset, you get invited into these programs and then you get some big websites and big products which are not even out in the market and you test them out. Rewards definitely are great, but your time is not valued that much. You spend five days and you don't find a vulnerability, you don't get paid. You find you just spend two hours and you find a potential vulnerability, you get paid $5,000 for it. So again, it depends. It's a game of what balance you are having. Anyways, 
We have different zones in these websites and almost all of them work on the same principle. Some websites are open to report vulnerabilities, but there are rules there as well. You cannot just openly brag on social media about somebody's vulnerability. If you do so, you are kicked out of the platform. In the private programs, you cannot even discuss with other friends that what kind of things you are testing. And on top of that, there are other third level of them where a sandbox is given to you. Let's just say Amazon wants you to test their new launch of the product, which is doing some payment integration. So having that test on a real live website is not something that you do. And a special sandbox is given to you, which is exact replica of the website, working functionality, registration, everything is same. You test that sandbox and you provide report based on that sandbox. Anything else that you touch, you get kicked out of the program. Also, you may find consequences in your inbox. Now let's go ahead and talk about the possible consequences that you might or might not face. Now, why you would be facing consequences? Now, there can be many reasons for that. Probably you have tried to publish this vulnerability or loophole in social media or through article, and you try to defame the company intentionally or unintentionally. Somebody used that knowledge and tried to do it in a hack, and then company found out that you wrote an article about it. It's, it's really a double-edged sword. So regardless of the fact that how you face the consequences, let's just say what can be the possible consequences of that. IT laws in India are very, very strict and they are not that much popular. Not a lot of people knows about them. Now the country is getting very strict about the IT laws and a lot of news are coming up about some people who are facing these consequences. Still, a lot of people don't know that what is inside the IT law and what it covers. Do you know, to a surprise fact to a lot of you, that sometimes people try to run the script and try to flood somebody's inbox with the spam emails? That also comes under IT law and probably you can face two years of jail time for that. And there are small and big crimes that are mentioned in the IT laws, which a lot of people don't know. They just do it for fun or just some other things. But again, these are covered up in IT laws. How do I know so much about these IT laws and this much all? I started my career as a penetration tester and a consultant for security and I studied them well ins and out. So I know all of this. I have given my services to a lot of corporate on these sections. So yes, I do have my fair amount of knowledge on that. Now definitely ignoring these laws or probably you just don't know about them and you act onto that and somehow you commit a crime on that. Now definitely there is a jail time which is very strict and also there are plethora of fines that are involved but that's not the only consequences you face. In order to understand the consequences more because I know you are a very smart person, let's turn the table a little bit. Instead of asking for a job in an HR or in a company, let's just say you are boss of a company or you are HR in a company. And on the other side of the table, this is the person sitting who is asking you for a job. And you find out that this person has served in jail due to some of the IT crimes he has committed. Or there are some lawsuits on him because he leaked information from a company. Would you like to hire him? Now, don't try to be a little bit genuine person because the world is not that much kind. As a student, there is a lot in front of you. There is a lot that you can achieve in your life and these small lawsuits and small crimes that you unwillingly and unknowingly have committed can result in devastating uh, factors that you can have. So let's not go too much in depth. And let's just not lie to ourselves here that what possibly can happen on the other side of table. Do you think that person will listen to your story, what actually happened? Or there, is, there are other hundred people just outside the office who probably are better candidates than you and are having no lawsuits. So, as a conclusion, I don't need to spell out this entire scenario to it. You are way smarter than this. So act a little bit smarter and just make sure whatever you are doing, do it with caution and do it with responsibility. Anything that you don't know is on you. I definitely can understand that this video was a little bit harsh 
too much scary as well. But the intention of this video was not something like this. The intention was simply to make sure that you understand that how real world actually behaves and what possibly can be the consequences. With this, I would still like to put this fact that entire industry of penetration testing and uh, these ethical hacking is worth billions and billions of dollars. And still, there is a huge demand of people going and looking forward to go into the pr profession. And it's still a great field and line of work. I am to not against on it, but what I want you to convey with this video is make sure you understand what is actually and full knowledge of it. And if you accidentally come at any of these things, there will be consequences. There is no such thing as perfect crime. You will get caught and whether you know that's a crime that you are doing or whether you don't know, there still will be consequences. And I would highly recommend to watch more about it, learn more about it. I'll try to make more videos on the IT laws, especially a small, a video which can give you love, like some basics of it. If you want that, let me know in the comment section. I'll try my best to make a summarized version of it. And with this, I would say that act smart, be cautious, and be responsible. That's it for this one, and let's catch up in the next one. Just 22 years, but probably second year or third year? God damn, another wastage of such a beautiful and potential student's life. You should act smarter than this and be responsible. I can really benedict to you. All of my attention I've been giving to you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. On my mind.